I'm here with Celtic violinist Mairead Nesbitt. Thank you so much for sitting down with me in between shows. I know you have quite a schedule going, being on Broadway. It must be a, yes. must be a hard <laughs> schedule to do. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for chatting with me today. And uh, yeah, it's a busy day today. Two shows two today, shows. two shows yesterday. So getting plenty of exercise, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Let's take it back to the beginning. When did you um, first fall in love with the violin? And when did you realize this was something that you wanted to do as a career? Well, I think um, it really stems back to my mother and father. And um, my whole family are musicians, and my, my mother is a great fiddle player, mm -hmm. and um, my sister too, and we all played music together growing up. And really, that was the instrument that I fell in love with, because I just looked at her and I said, oh, I, I, I just want to play with you. Mm -hmm. I want to play music with you, and um, I, it's just, it was my goal. As a, as a child, you know, and um, I love playing with her and I love playing with my whole family and that's where it all began. Yeah, I know you do play your, your newest album, right? Features your family members? Yes, it does. Hibernia, I'm very, very lucky to have my parents mm -hmm. uh, on it and also uh, two of my brothers as well. And um, then we did a family album after that, uh, Devil's Bit Sessions. And right. so the whole family That's your it. newest, right. Yes, yes. And um, um, actually they're both new, they were both done around the same time. Uh -huh. and um, you know three generations of, of Nesbitt's on that one so that's really cool <laughs> really cool now I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that you got your start um, with Celtic Woman probably the biggest and longest running uh, yes. gig in your career what was that like to join and, and what what led you down that road to Celtic amazing Woman? Um, yeah Celtic Woman is just oh such a global phenomenon you know and um, um, I think um, my my first big show, of course, is Lord of the Dance and Feet of Flames, and um, and I think then with Celtic Woman, um, obviously I got um, in contact, you know, doing some work on different projects with David Dance, mm -hmm. and um, that really led to my relationship with him properly, and to me being one of the founding members of Celtic Woman, right. you know, and, and it's more than 12 years ago now, I think it's 13 years wow. ago or something like that, and wow. um, it's just what a fantastic thing to be a part of mm -hmm. for all of us, you know, and it's like one big family, mm -hmm. and um, I know you've met some of the girls, I have met some and of the girls. Are every, every single one of them are total sweethearts, mm -hmm. and I've had the pleasure and the honor to work with them all. When you were starting out, did you know that it was going to be something as special as it became? Or, I mean, yeah. Celtic Woman may be a phenomenon, but you are also a phenomenon as well. Thank you. Due Thank to that. You. So. Um, no, I don't think any of us did. Mm -hmm. I think we thought it was one night only, and um, we were hoping, I suppose, that, oh, let's, you know, let's do this again sometime, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it was uh, in Dublin where we shot our first special uh, with PBS, who's been the most amazing partner with uh, lots of shows, Celtic mm -hmm. Woman included, and the show I'm with now, Rocktopia included as well. So, um, what a fantastic way to get into people's, you know, lives and sitting rooms and just mm -hmm. to say hi musically, you know, and um, yeah, I, we didn't know it was going to be so popular and here, you know, it, it was, you know, and, and still is. One of the best things about you guys uh, in Celtic Woman and Celtic Thunder and all the PBS shows actually, mm -hmm. they really are very fan friendly and you get to meet a lot of people. What is one of the most touching stories that you can remember being told by a fan or how your music has touched touched someone? There's just been so many stories to mm -hmm. be honest with you and so many letters, so many notes and so many of course emails and, and then of course all the social media platforms mm -hmm. um, that the music is healing and all, that all the music that, that I've been involved in um, with Celtic Woman and my own albums and uh, with different shows um, has touched people's lives in a way that really has made a significant impact on their healing, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I've had the pleasure of meeting a, a lot of very, very lovely people uh, at meet and greets beforehand mm -hmm. and afterwards um, at Rocktopia here even um, uh, on Broadway and it's like what an occasion to be on Broadway and to meet 
um, all my loyal fan base mm -hmm. who are coming. They 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 followed me on on lots of different shows and on Celtic Woman, and now they're following me on Rocktopia and they're coming to the show, and to meet them and and for them to tell me again to reiterate how special mm -hmm. that all the music has been to them, ha is just been an amazing. Thing, you know and very personal stories as mm -hmm. well and um, which I don't know if I'm allowed to divulge but very personal stories um, of, of health and um, emotional healing and all that kind of thing which is very very touching to me yeah that says yes. a lot about you as a performer that you connect so much with either live audiences yes. or viewers who have come to know you from PBS specials Thank you. so we are backstage here at Rocktopia your current show yes. um, gonna be running for a couple more weeks here on Broadway yeah. Your first Broadway show. Yes. What's it been like opening on Broadway? You know, with Celtic Woman, you've played bigger houses, but Broadway yes. has got a whole different energy, I would assume. Absolutely. Broadway has been um, a dream of mine, obviously, on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. And um, that and uh, Carnegie Hall, which I did play with Celtic Woman before, but mm -hmm. also um, with uh, another amazing show, Way of the Ray of the Rain. Mm -hmm. And um, But Rocktopia is on Broadway, and I can't tell you... I don't think it's even sunk in yet, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. even, we, even though we've been here for four weeks. Um, it's just how special it is to us all and to me especially um, to, get, you know, to get the opportunity and the honour to play um, in such a beautiful theatre, the mm -hmm. Broadway, and uh, with such an amazing show, Rocktopia, because there's so many different genres um, uh, and, and different styles that I have to... Um, adapt to in this right. show. Um, it is definitely the hardest show, technically, that I've ever played. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you know, had a lot of preparation. And of course, for Broadway, you want to be as perfect as possible. And um, it's been amazing to, to, to mix up the rock music and the classical mm -hmm. music, uh, as well with my Celtic twist on things as well. So I've, I've tried to get that in a little bit. Well. It was, yeah, it was beautiful. Um, Anybody who's seen you in Celtic Woman sees that you put a million percent energy when you're doing it. And now you, you're in Rocktopia, you're putting like two million percent <laughs> energy into it. It's like, where, where does your energy come from? You know, I, um, I don't know. I think it's the audience. I think the audience give off this energy. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I, you know, soak that in and bring it back out to them. And also the, the amazing artists on stage that yeah. I get to play with and the amazing guest artists that we have on stage. Like, of course, we had Pat Monaghan mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for, for four weeks, actually. Yeah. And now we've Dee Snyder of Twisted Sister, who is a, an absolute ball of energy. And um, to, you know, to keep up with those people, you know, you just, it's, it's a marathon and a very enjoyable one and uh, one that I know that the audiences love and yeah. um, we just get to do that every night. Does the show go as quickly for you as it did for us? I mean, as, did it as, go quickly? It Fantastic. went very quickly. Yeah, oh, well, that's phenomenal. a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Does it feel like, have you ever had a, a house of people yeah. who didn't seem like it was going over as well as it could have been or, or like they felt like they weren't into it? I can't imagine with this show that it's happened No, at actually, all. the audiences have been incredible mm -hmm. they've been really getting into it and um, it really is one big party and it's just fantastic that they're getting into it so much and they they understand all the different strands that mm -hmm. go into it and all the beautiful arrangements the classical arrangements and the rock arrangements um, you know Rob Evan and um, Randall and Tony have, have have done such amazing jobs on the arrangements and Oh, it's it's incredible to be able to play mm -hmm. play those every night, and the audience just really get into it. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what's next for Rocktopia? Is it after here? Are you going to be continuing with the show, or are you not sure yet? Yeah, I mean, I'll be continuing with the show, and um, we um, are doing a tour this year, mm -hmm. and um, there'll be lots of things I, I, I'm sure coming up. You know, because so many people have come to see us on Broadway and come to see me, which is fantastic as well. I'm so um, delighted that a lot of people who follow me have come and, yeah. and are still going to come as well for the ne next two weeks. So there'll be lots of exciting things happening. Now, you also have a violin line. What, I do. Obviously, you were inspired because you play the violin. Yes. But, but what made you want to take that extra step and say, you know what, I want to do my own violins and, and you know. Yeah. Um, well, my own violin line um, really was inspired by, uh, first and foremost, my parents. And growing up, 
I had this acquaintance with um, my parents as well with uh, Tommy Robinson and he was a violin dealer uh, uh, from Ireland and he used to bring violins down to us to the house in, in Tipperary and as a child I'd play them for pocket money. I'd mm -hmm. play them and, and open them up for a few months and then he would sell them off. That's basically you know what what I did mm -hmm. as a child and I used to get to play all these beautiful violins, these Amatis and the odd Guarneri and, and, and uh, beautiful violins like that. And then he brought my, my own violin, my Matthias Alvin, Albany violin, um, to me and he said, you know, play that in for a few months, you know, see what you think. And, and he left it with me. Wow. Yeah, I was 14 at the time and he left it with me and I, that's the one I play today and that's the one you heard today in the show wow. as well. And also, I also play a violin from my own line, which is an exact copy of my Matthias Albany. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the Mairead Nesbitt Celtic Violin Collection and really it's a tribute to Tommy and to my parents. And I was asked by um, this fantastic luthier here in, 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 in New York and I was very privileged and I, I love um, having a hands-on um, you know, connection with these instruments, picking them out. Mm -hmm. It was a long time, you know, in, in the, in, you know, to, to pick them out and pick out all the accessories and they're all European made and all the strings are Tomastic in felt strings, they're incredible strings and um, the coon shoulder rests and so I was very, very careful that they would all be European mm -hmm. and um, European made and uh, then finished off here in New York and I'm very, very happy with them. So I hope people Good. go to my website, maraidnasbettviolin.com and have a look and, you know, hope, hopefully they'll get to try some out. There's some uh, in New York here and in Milwaukee at Casquio Music and in Ireland and Dublin and wow. Charlie Burns in Ireland and Dublin. So. Did you ever think when you were starting out this is where your life would go and be in such I, huge shows and have your own violin line? It must be... A lot to wrap your head around some days. It is, it is actually, um, yeah, you kind of have to, have to pinch yourself mm -hmm. a little bit. It's a lot of hard work, but um, it's it's very, very enjoyable work mm -hmm. and I love it and um, it's it's just my passion and yeah, I, I'm, I'm just doing something I really, really love and I'm delighted to bring uh, violins as well to, to people who, who, you know, I know growing up it was hard to get um, a beautiful instrument that's affordable mm -hmm. and so so instruments are hard to come by they might be made and mass produced they're not handmade mm -hmm. but then the instruments that are handmade are too expensive you know for for somebody who might be they have started off and they're coming into their intermediate phase and you know will they keep going will they not and it's the sound that they're projecting a nice tone it's a very hard instrument the yeah. violin so i'm hoping i'm helping some people anyway achieve that how do you cope with being away from home is there other than you know chatting i know we live in the digital age where you yes. can tweet your family or or facetime them and all that other stuff that yes. must help immensely but you know what's the toughest part it's tough it's tough i mean my husband is a lighting designer mm -hmm. uh, director and um he gets all, uh, all, you know, that basically he understands how, how it is, how touring, and, and actually we met on Celtic Woman, actually. And, okay. Uh, yeah, and, and, the second uh, couple to come out of Celtic Woman. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we're and, actually the first, probably. Yeah, You guys maybe, are probably first. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, he works with The Who uh, at the moment, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, uh, you know, iconic band and um, he gets the fact that you know I'm I'm you know have to travel a little bit and also he has to travel a bit as well but also my family in Ireland FaceTime has been absolutely mm -hmm. incredible and I get so homesick and I always want to go home and I go I go home to Ireland a lot and we both do you know we we go home and meet up with all the family and play a few tunes and and that kind of thing so it's it's um, it's hard but um, you know you do you get very organized mm -hmm. and you know you just you know when you're going to meet up and and when you're going to have your home time and uh, when you're going to go to ireland and, and meet up with family so it's fine what do you do uh in your downtime when you're not 
Something away from the violin, what do you enjoy doing? Mm, okay, um, I love walking. <laughs> I love walking by the beach. I love the beach. I love the smell of the salt. Okay. And um, it's just really, you know, you were talking about healing, things mm -hmm. healing earlier on. That's really healing for me. Um, I love, I just love playing music with my family. I, I absolutely adore it mm -hmm. to play with my mother and father and, and, and my whole family. And and just walking, I love running. I love um, just being outside. I mm -hmm. love being outside. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Mary, thank you so much for taking time out in between shows. It's very special to interview you, and uh, I very much appreciate it. So. Thank you so Best much for the chat. It's yeah. so good to to meet up and have a chat and and to say hi to everybody. It's great. Thanks again. It was a pleasure. Thank you.